it's my pleasure to welcome you to the 2023 PCR London Valves. My name is Lennart Conradi. I'm a cardiothoracic surgeon from Hamburg in Germany. And it's my great pleasure to be here with you and with Alison Duncan from the Royal Brompton in London, who actually needs no introdu introduction at all. And we're here to speak about the technique of transcatheter mitral valve replacement. So Alison, we have two very well established therapeutic options uh, with decent data, good evidence. One is surgical mitral valve replacement or repair. The other one is transcatheter edge to edge repair. Where does TMVR fit in? Thank you very much, Leonard. Um, so certainly for both of those, the surgical and the transcatheter repair have got excellent results in terms of elimination of mitral regurgitation. And that used to be one of the unique selling points of transcatheter mitral valve replacement. But as people are getting better and better and, and are, are more adventurous in addressing some of the complex anatomies for mitral valve edge to edge repair, it does make you think what will be the value and where is the slot for transcatheter mitral valve replacement. But with everything, we need a, there's a spectrum of mitral valve anatomies, complex anatomies, and we need a toolbox. We need lots of different options for different patients depending on their anatomy. So particularly patients that are ineligible for edge-to-edge -edge repair. So complex anatomies, patients with mitral valve um, mitral annular calcification, uh, patients where you don't expect to eliminate their mitral regurgitation, where there's multiple jets or a small valve area or clefts. So th th there is a spectrum, but this, there is a need for replacement as well as the other uh, interventions that you described. Okay, very good. So would you say it would be fair to say we have uh, an, uh, a population of patients that for clinical reasons may be disqualified for surgery because of the periprocedural risk maybe, and for anatomical reasons disqualify for tear, and this is where to TMVR could be a good that's fit. That's right, and that's why that's the great value of the heart team because you bring these patients to MDT discussion where you hopefully have a surgeon, interventional cardiologist, imagers, and heart failure in the team, and you can address all of these issues the clinical factors, whether they're suitable for surgery or not, whether they're anatomically suitable for edge to edge, and then whether or not imaging wise they screen pass or they're eligible right. for screening for transcatheter mitral valve replacement. Excellent, very good. So, would you mind giving the auditorium? an example of, an, of a patient who would be ideal in that setting to receive a transcatheter mitral valve replacement? I think given the strength of TEER, if a patient's not surgery, surgical, then really you do need to sort of uh, uh, screen the patients anatomically to see if they would be suitable for replacement. If they're not anatomically suitable for edge to edge, they do need to be disqualified from that because the results of that are so good. So when I'm talking about screening, I'll be thinking about patients who've got um, uh, myxomatous valves, clefts, calcification in leaflets, calcification in grasping zones, uh, patients with, with cartation gaps that are really long, atrial secondary, uh, ventricular secondary, functional mitral regurgitation where perhaps you'll be needing to put in more than two or three devices. These are the sorts of patients I'd be thinking would be suitable and then of course they have to go through the screening process. So we need to make sure that they're anatomically suitable in terms of their annular size, the ri low risk of LVOT obstruction and, and a reasonable size LV that they're not at risk of LV diastolic or systolic collapse during the procedure. Right. And maybe the cohort of MAC patients also belongs to that kind of subpopulation, would you agree on that? I think the MAC cohort will be the cornerstone for TMVR. As people get better at TEER, still this is a, a subset of patients who have very limited options. They're frequently not surgical candidates, they're frequently not edge-to-edge -edge candidates, and they frequently are suitable for transcatheter mitral valve replacement. So I think this is the cornerstone of where TMVR will go, and that's a large subproportion of patients that we're dealing with. Yes, yes, I agree, absolutely. So in comparison to TIR as the most established interventional therapeutic, uh, TMVR is a young technique or one that we have less experience with, where would you prognose this therapy or this concept to go or to have to go in the future in order to become standard in what you call our toolbox? Well, I mean, one of the great thing, the, the great uh, advantages of TMVR, tricuspid valve replacement, is the elimination of MR. But it comes at the cost of access. So there's an issue with, at the moment, transapical access, and transfemoral access, you know, moving towards a lower, a less invasive um, uh, procedure. But it also there is a bleeding risk. We need to, to overcome the, the challenges of access, even in the transfemoral uh, uh, arena. But also then 
afterwards, these, patients, these devices tend to be quite large, so patients need to be on anticoagulation afterwards. We don't know what sort of anticoagulation and for how long. And then, of course, in due course, we're going to have to start thinking about the lifetime management of these patients because we don't know yet the durability of these devices and how long they'll last for. So, you know, particularly in younger patients, we don't have the evidence yet for how long the devices will last and what to do if and when we suffer from structural valve degeneration. Yes, very good. I, I agree to everything you said, uh, particularly regarding the access, I have to say. You know, if, if at some point we could combine the favorable uh, characteristics of a transeptal access that we've been knowing for a long time with TIR, with the effectiveness uh, in abolishing MR with a valve replacement, that would somehow, you know, take the best of both sides Absolutely. in one procedure. Absolutely. That would be the holy grail. Very good. So. Uh, this was it for our, from our side. Uh, thank you very much for watching and uh, goodbye.